Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Menopause University. I'm Menopause Barbie, your Menopause Taylor. And this is where you learn absolutely everything you need to know about all things pertaining to menopause. The good, the bad, and everything in between. You've turned, tuned into video number 413, and this is the very first video in a big unit on ovarian cancer. As you know, I cover everything in units. And even though this is the first video in this unit, do not assume that you can understand what I teach you in this unit if you haven't watched all the videos that came before it, because I will be putting many things into perspective by comparing them to what you've learned in the units that received this one. Most significantly, I'll be drawing on the information I taught you in the units on cancer in general, endometrial uterine cancer, cervical cancer, and breast cancer. I'd just like to warn you from the start that every video builds on the last. Now, as you can see, I'm dressed as a conductor, a train conductor that is. And this is my attire today because it's perfect for understanding the role your ovaries play with regard to your reproductive tract. In any education on ovarian cancer, which constitutes abnormal ovaries, we need to begin with an education on normal ovaries first. And in any education on normal ovaries, we need to address them in the context of your entire reproductive tract. This approach is critical to your understanding of what will come later in the unit. There is always a reason for the goofy things I do. <laughs> so this particular video is on the part your normal ovaries play with regard to the rest of your entire reproductive tract. Now, in my book, whether you have the first edition or the second edition, all of chapter 32 is on ovarian cancer, but in the book, I jump right into the topic of cancer of your ovaries. Here, I'm gonna spend some time presenting the normal functions of your ovaries before jumping into the cancer of your ovaries. So if you want to find the information on the normal function of your ovaries in my book, that's going to be in chapter two in the section on anatomy. In the units on endometrial uterine cancer and cervical cancer in these videos, I just jumped right into the anatomy of the uterus and cervix. But here in the ovarian cancer unit, I can't really do that. And the reason I can't do that is because unlike the case with your uterus and cervix, which are fairly independent anatomical structures, your ovaries are the only part of your reproductive tract that affect all the other parts of your reproductive tract. So today I'll be talking about your entire reproductive tract. And your entire reproductive tract as a whole is a whole lot like a train track. This is what I have here, a train set, a whole train track. Now, most train tracks <laughs> that are made for kids are somewhat circular or figure of eight. The train goes round and round or even in a figure of eight pattern, but there's really not a beginning or an end. Ah, but the train track of your reproductive organs is a very different train track indeed. It has a definite origin and a definite final destination. So let's use this train and train tract analogy to further your understanding of the role your ovaries play. I like to divide the course of a train tract into four parts of the train tract itself and four cars on the train tract. They coincide perfectly with the four parts of your reproductive tract. So let's address the train tract itself first, and then we'll turn our attention to the cars on the train track. Okay, the first part of a train track and of a train itself <laughs> is really 
the train factory. This is the place where it all begins. I mean, you could say it's, in some ways, the first stop on the train track. It's where the train begins its existence long before it can be recognized as a train. The train factory is where all the spare parts of the train reside. And then they all come together to create the train. So the train remains in the train factory until it's ready to make its first journey out onto the train track. So we're going to put this right up here. That's our first part of our train demonstration. i got to get the space first. How about that? Okay. <laughs> okay, then, when the train finally leaves the train factory for its first journey, the next stop on the train track is the train station and passenger platform. This is the familiar location for catching a train. It's where people gather and meet up and board the train. It's somewhat of a boring place when you really think about it. <laughs> There's not much to it, just a big building next to the train track. So we're going to put that one right here. <laughs> All right, after that, you encounter the long stretch of the actual track that constitutes the journey for the train. This is what takes all the time. Compared to the time spent in the train factory and train station, this is the central focus of everything that came before it. So the train slowly makes its way down the train track, getting closer and closer to its final destination with every minute, right? So our train track goes here. And finally, the train track ends at its final destination. This is the end of the line, the last stop. It's the arrival terminal. And it signifies completion of the long journey, right? So that goes here. So the train tract itself consists of four parts. The train factory, this is where we create the train. The train station, which is where people meet for the long journey. The long tract itself, which is the actual journey, and the arrival terminal as the final destination at the end of the line. So now it's time to shift our attention from the train tract to the train cars that are on the track. And there are four different kinds of train cars. First, we have the engine. The engine runs the show. It's where the conductor belongs. And the conductor controls everything that happens along the entire train track. So our engine is gonna go up here next to the train factory to designate the first part of the actual train cars. This is because it's the first car of the train and it's analogous to the origin of the train and the train factory as the place of the train's creation. Next comes the passenger car. Now this is where people join together to share the journey. And where do the people board the passenger car? train station. So we're going to put the passenger car right here next to our train station. After that, we have the cargo car. The cargo car carries the precious cargo. Now when you think of cargo, you think of transport, don't you? Well, since we're using this train talk as an analogy for your reproductive track, I put a baby in the cargo car as the precious cargo. It's a matter of carrying stuff from point A to point B. So we're going to put the cargo car here next to the train open track 
that represents that long journey, the long journey itself, okay? <laughs> and finally, we have the caboose. The caboose is last. It's after all the other cars. And once again, <laughs> since the baby is the result of the reproduction, I've put a baby in the caboose. And because it signifies the end of the train, we'll liken it to the end of the journey. So it goes next to the arrival terminal here, right there. Okay. <laughs> so just as there are four parts to the train track itself, there are also four cars on the train. The engine corresponding to the factory, train factory, the passenger car corresponding to the train station, the cargo car corresponding to the long train track for the journey, and the caboose corresponding to the arrival terminal. Well, the reason I'm dressed as a train conductor <laughs> and the reason I'm babbling on about the four parts of the train track and the four kinds of train cars is because they are a perfect analogy for the four parts of your reproductive track. Way back in video number seven, I taught you all about the anatomy of your reproductive tract. You learned that there are four anatomical structures that carry out all of your reproductive functions. So, they are your ovaries, your fallopian tubes, your uterus, and your cervix. Your ovaries are like the train factory. They are where it all begins. Your ovaries are really an egg and hormone factory. So they belong here. This is the egg and hormone factory that constitutes the same thing that the engine or the train factory constituted. All the raw materials for reproduction are housed in your ovaries, just like all the individual parts of the train are housed in the train factory. And your ovaries run the show with regard to your reproductive tract. They control everything that happens in the entire rest of your reproductive tract. So they are like the engine of the train. Without the engine, the train doesn't run. And without ovaries, you don't reproduce. So all of your reproductive parts really hinge on your ovaries. Your ovaries are the most important part of all. So now we have ovaries as a part of our train track analogy demo. And they function as an egg and hormone factory. And they belong up there with the train factory and the engine. In close approximation to your ovaries, you have your fallopian tubes. Your fallopian tubes, as I taught you in video number seven, are nothing but a highway. They are a two-lane highway. Your fallopian tubes are where egg and sperm meet, so they function just like a train station where people can meet for the long journey. And they function like a passenger car. Once together, the egg and sperm become one and they board the passenger train to take the journey together. So let's put our highway up here next to our fallopian tubes because they are next to the train station and the passenger car. And what do the egg and sperm create after uniting in your fallopian tube? A baby, the precious cargo. But that precious cargo travels to your uterus for the long journey. You learn that your uterus is nothing but a baby carriage. Its only purpose is to carry a developing fetus to term. So your uterus is like the cargo car of a train. It's also like the train track because it's where your precious cargo remains for the entire journey. The journey of reproduction is pregnancy. That's why the open train track is so long. So our baby carriage belongs up here 
by the uterus and alongside the cargo car and the train tract itself. Finally, the journey comes to an end and that's when your cervix comes into play. You've learned that your cervix is nothing but really a door to your uterus. <laughs> but it doesn't look like this door. <laughs> Instead, the door to your uterus looks more like a bagel. <laughs> because the door is really just a hole, like the one in the center of a bagel. All this hole does is open and close, open and close, open and close to let things enter and exit your uterus. So it's a lot like the arrival terminal where people exit the train and it constitutes the last stop on the reproductive tract so that everyone has to get off the train. In other words, the baby has to leave the uterus. It has reached the arrival terminal. And since it's last, it's kind of like the caboose of the train. So the bagel belongs all the way down here next to our door <laughs> and alongside the arrival terminal and the caboose. So the four parts of your reproductive tract are your two ovaries, your two fallopian tubes, your uterus, and your cervix. If we make a chart of our reproductive train tract depicting all of these things on the display board, it would look like this. In the first column, I've listed the numbers one through four to designate that there are four parts to your reproductive train tract. The first, in the first row, which is green, it designates your ovaries as being the engine of the entire train tract and functioning as an egg and hormone factory analogous to the train factory. In the second row, in blue, it designates your fallopian tubes as being a highway for the egg and sperm to meet, just like the train station where people meet for the journey. The third row in orange designates your uterus as the baby carriage that functions like the cargo car and carries your baby on the long journey of the train track. The fourth row in yellow designates your cervix as the exit door at the arrival station that functions as the last part of the train, just like the caboose. You can find this chart in the description box link or at menopausetaylor.me. So this unit will focus on your ovaries. They are the most important part of your whole reproductive tract. They run the train when they're normal <laughs> and they disrupt the train when they're not. So we'll be coming back to this analogy later in the unit to elucidate some very important aspects of ovarian cancer. And as elementary as this may seem, it will be the foundation for a variety of lessons in this unit. My goal is always to use the familiar to teach you the unfamiliar. And we're all somewhat familiar with trains, at least enough to appreciate this analogy. So now that you know the ovaries are really a factory, the next video will focus on your ovaries as egg and hormone factories. Be sure to go to menopausetaylor.me between now and next week to schedule your life-saving consultation. And before you leave today, go ahead and make sure you've subscribed to my YouTube channel and my newsletter. And if you want to see all sorts of other interesting things about my life, <laughs> follow me on social media, all the, all the things, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Stories, TikTok, all that stuff. I will see you next week. <laughs> Bye.